Hey guys, and welcome to Taylor Tech. So now that I've gotten uh, my server and my switch safely mounted in my rack, uh, what we're gonna do is take a look at uh, how we can remotely manage those so that every time I need to make a change or a configuration setting, um, I don't have to drag a monitor and a keyboard over there or a whole computer. Fortunately, all of the gear that I've got in there right now is enterprise grade gear except for the free NAS box. So it, they uh, have uh, features built into them to make remote management really easy. So we're gonna go through the steps of getting uh, both the 710's iDRAC uh, and the remote management features of the 6120 XP set up. We'll also talk about why I will probably never do another white box server build like I did with the free NAS box, um, especially not one using consumer grade hardware. So if you remember from the last video when we were getting ready to put the 710 into the rack, uh, the first thing we did was did we did our upgrades and part of that was putting in an iDRAC 6 Enterprise. Uh, what that uh, device does is it allows me to have a um, network based KVM where I can directly connect my computer that's on the same network as the 710 um, and as if I am sitting at it with a monitor attached, meaning I can reboot it from a cold boot and see the screen the entire time it's booting. Um, this is a really nice feature to have um, the, the, because it allows me to make configuration changes without having to drag a keyboard to monitor over there. So we didn't cover all the steps necessary to actually get the iDRAC 6 Enterprise working when we uh, did the last video, we simply plugged it in. Um, you do have to do one quick setup step to actually get that ethernet port that uh, came with that module enabled. So during the boot process of the 710, you hold down the control E and at the very end, you'll get a uh, configuration screen for the iDRAC system. And there, what you want to do is you'll want to uh, go into the settings for, uh, for the iDRAC LAN and uh, make sure that you change it from a, step, from a shared to a uh, dedicated uh, ethernet port. Um, you can also go ahead and set DHCP while you're there. Um, but just in case you forget to set it there, it is possible to set it from the LCD screen on the front. Um, it's also actually, you can check the IP address as well, which is really handy uh, so that you don't have to go digging through your DHCP tables to see where exactly that iDRAC landed. Now, of course, before you're going to get an IP address, you need to make sure that you plug it in. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the uh, iDRAC on the 710 and the management port on the UCS6120 XP. So once you have that IP address off the front, what you can do is you can go uh, to a web browser on any computer on your network and type in the IP address for the 710. It's the iDRAC system. Uh, it's the same one that you got off of that LCD panel on the front. Uh, from that web viewer, you can uh, click launch uh, console and it will download a little Java applet that uh, when you execute it, will open up a KVM window uh, into, the, uh, into the 710. Now, one thing that you should know is that you need to make sure that you whitelist the address for the 710 because if you don't, then you'll get a Java security error that won't let you run the applet. But uh, that's really easy to do. Just go into Java configuration settings, go to security, and you can edit the whitelist and add it. Just make sure that you put in uh, an HTTP and an HTTPS entry, um, or whichever one you intend to use, so that you uh, so that it will work. It won't work. An HTTP whitelist won't work with an HTTPS, vice versa. So next, we're going to talk about getting the uh, 6120 XP set up. So you may recall from the 10 gigabit Ethernet at home video that I had a lot of trouble when I was trying to use the UCS Manager application. Um, I just could not get it to run, and it made it very difficult to try and manage that switch. Because let's be quite honest, the console on that thing is a kind of a nightmare to, to navigate and to find settings in, and especially as complicated as that device is. Fortunately, I was able to find a blogger who had actually figured out what the issue was and solved for it. Uh, essentially, I had a self-signed certificate on the device that Java did not recognize and it was throwing a security error when it tried to redirect from HTTP to HTTPS during the login process. Um, and so it was an unhandled exception that was happening in an older version of the Switch's firmware. Uh, once I, uh, what I was able to do using this guy's instructions was enable HTTP, turn off the HTTP to HTTPS redirect, and then I could access the, the virtual, uh, 
and then I could access the UCS manager uh, using the, the web interface and the Java applet. Um, so again, just like the uh, with the iDRAC, to you get a Java applet that, gives, that is the actual UCS manager application, and it's really nice because you can directly uh, change port settings. You can uh, actually manage your entire UCS network if you have multiple UCS devices. Right now, I just have the one, so uh, it's not as useful as it could be. But you can also manage all of the network settings for it. So if at some point in the future you're going to move. Uh, the device on your network, give it a different IP address, you can change it here instead of having to go into the console, which is really nice. So last thing we're going to talk about is the FreeNAS box. Um, and this one is kind of the most unfortunate of the three because uh, there's not really a good way for me to remote manage it right now. Um, I bought a consumer grade motherboard, which I, there were people who had commented on it. Why didn't you get one that had some an IPMI built in? And uh, frankly, I wish I had at this point. Uh, seeing how nice it is to be able to remote manage stuff uh, using these tools. So um, going forward, if I ever do another white box build again, it'll be with something that has a remote management module built into it. And it'll be one of those things, it's, it's not just a nice to have, it'll be a requirement. Now that's not to say that I can't do any remote management on the FreeNAS box. Um, FreeNAS gives you a lot of options, including a direct console uh, from the FreeNAS UI. But if anything ever happens to it where either the operating system gets broken or um, I need to change something on the UEFI uh, BIOS or anything like that, I'll have to actually drag a keyboard and a monitor over there. But going forward, um, that'll be something that I'll be making sure I don't do uh, in terms of using consumer parts that don't have remote management uh, tools built into them. So remote management tools, like we just talked about, are really awesome. Um, you can find them on almost any enterprise gear when you're looking to build, buy stuff for your home lab. Um, of course, Dell has the iDRAC, which is uh, integrated Dell remote access control, I believe, uh, something very similar to that. HP also has their implementation of it called ILO, Integrated Lights Out. Supermicro calls theirs IPMI, which is actually just the industry standard on which all of these are built. So, te so technically when you get down to it, iDRAC and ILO are both implementations of IPMI. Um, I believe IBM also has one called RAS. So if you have devices that have this type of connectivity, uh, while it can be really handy, you wanna be really careful about how you implement it uh, into your network. Right now, mine are wide open on my internal network, and that's because I'm pretty much the only person in the house who understands how to get access to them and our network is closed. It's not something that general, the general public can access. Um, but if you're implementing this in a, like a environment where more people are going to have access to the devices on your network, you want to be really careful about how you implement it and really keep security in mind because while they're very powerful tools, they're tools that could very easily be abused by a bad actor. A lot of people will do uh, either sideband or out-of-band networks, which are basically just a separate network from uh, their main network where all of their management interfaces are consolidated. Um, but that's something we'll talk about uh, in a later video, uh, which I hope to do on network segmentation. So um, just keep in mind as you're implementing these, make sure that you've got passwords on these things. Make sure they're not the default passwords. Uh, make sure that you uh, are, are securing them as best you can. You know, while non-default accounts, non-default passwords are great, it's even better if you can make it so that just not, not just anybody can even see the interfaces in the first place. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, throw a like on it and subscribe for more content like this in the future. If you have any comments or questions for me, you can leave them in the comment section down below. If you'd like to support what I'm doing on this channel, you can do so by using the Amazon affiliate link in the description section as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.